If you want to create super realistic LED screen material that consists with real, actual RGB pixels, this video is for you. We will see how to create customizable LED screen material. You'll be able to use any screen texture you want and also any pixel shape in your project. There are many benefits to use this material on your screen. In addition to bringing in realism, this material will also allow you to use lower resolution textures on larger surfaces like this giant stage screen. Instead of blurry pixels, you will see the actual cool looking RGB pixels. I was initially inspired by Battlefield 2042. The artists here made really great job creating this type of material. And I decided that it would be cool if I can show you how you can make the similar material inside Unreal Engine. So let's bring more realism to your scene. Let's start with an idea of how this material works and how the RGB pixels work. Each pixel on your PC or mobile screen consists of red, green and blue lights or sub-pixels. To create any color, each sub-pixel uses different intensity. The white color would be possible if each of RGB lights are fully bright. This combination of subpixel brightness will create that green color on the screen, and this one another color for instance. If we take an image like this, it also consists of three channels, red, green and blue. We can separate these channels and as you can see, there are basically grayscale images. These grayscale values control of how bright each corresponding subpixel should be. Let's look at an example with the red subpixel. The white color makes it fully bright, and the black color means that the subpixel is off. And the same for the other channels. And we can easily recreate this behavior inside Unreal Engine. So we can separate RGB channels from any image and then using simple pixel mask combine them back, but only using red, green and blue colors with different brightness. Let's take a look at the scene I created. Here I have this stage for some presentations with large screen. Inside my content browser I imported two textures. One of them is pixel texture with red, green and blue rectangles with pretty small resolution of 128 pixels. I also created this texture to display on the screen. This image is perfectly covered and positioned at the center of my UVs. It's important for you to do the same in order to get pixels to work properly. This texture is 2K in resolution. Let's create a new material. I'll name it M underscore LED screen underscore basic. Inside the material editor, I'll add my pixel texture. Right click on it and convert it to parameter in order to change it later at any time. I'll name it pixel shape. Add a comment by pressing C on my keyboard and also connect this texture with the emissive color input. In order to better see what is going on, let's switch the preview mesh to plane. Then I'll drag and drop the screen texture, convert it to parameter and name it screen texture underscore pixelated with the same comment. To control detailing or in our case resolution, let's add texture coordinate node. Then add multiply and also scalar parameter, which I'll name as resolution with the default value of 1, and connect them together and with UVs input. I'll also add a comment UVs to make things clear. Let me disconnect this texture for now. Now we need to separate RGB channels to get individual mask of each of them. For this I'll use node called component mask. And also duplicate this node two times. To have more control over how my node graph looks visually, I can double click on the node connection to create reround point and connect this point with the component masks like that. In the first one, leave only red channel. In the second node, I'll leave only green channel. And in the last one, let's check only blue channel. If I expand each component mask, we can see that we've now isolated the red, green, and blue rectangles. I'll collapse them back. Now we need to do the same trick with our texture. We need to isolate each channel. Let's select these nodes, duplicate them and place them right here. I'll connect the texture with this reroute point, add another point to adjust the view of my graph and position it here. So we will use the subpixels as a mask for the channels of our image. Let's add linear interpolate node by pressing L. Also duplicate them two times and position them like that. I will connect the red channel from the image texture to the B input and the red channel from the pixel texture with the alpha input. Do the same for the other nodes as you can see on the screen. One more little tip for you to better node graphs. You can select nodes like that and press Q to align them. This will make your graph looks much cleaner. Let me align them together. Now we've got our grayscale values and we need to take each channel and multiply it with red, green and blue colors to get our pixels to work. Let's add multiply node. Duplicate it two times and connect them with the lerp nodes. To create RGB colors, let's add constant 3 vector by pressing number 3. We also need 3 of them. In the first one, I will set the value of the red channel to 1 to get red color. In the second one, let's set the green value to 1. And in the last one, let's create a blue color. Now connect the colors with the multiplies. To combine these nodes to one single image, I will use add node. 
connect the first multiply with the second, and finally create another add node and connect them together. I'll select these nodes and add another comment. Let's say RGB pixels. We can now connect our last node with the emissive color input. I'll hit save and close my material editor. I'm going to create the material instance and apply it on my screen. Let me move the camera a little bit closer. I want the resolution of my screen to be 1024 in order to better see the pixels on the screen. I'm gonna open my image and change the maximum texture size to 1024 pixels. Then I'll open my material instance, move it here, and change the resolution to 1024 pixels as well. And boom! Now we get our image completely generated using RGB pixels. But if I zoom closer, you can see, even though the image now made with RGB pixels, it still doesn't look right. I mean, if you look at this part of the image, you can see that this is not how pixels work. You can see the part of the image in the middle of the subpixel. In reality, each light can display only one part of the image, and it may only have one brightness value. For comparison, we need to get this image look like that. I've seen many tutorials that skip this part, so how to fix it? If I open my texture in Adobe Photoshop, we can see all individual square pixels. But if we look at the same texture inside Unreal Engine, the image is blurry. It's happening because of compression settings inside Unreal Engine. So we can change the compression settings from default to user interface to DRGB alpha to get the image without losing the quality. And what is more important, we need to scroll down to the texture settings and change the filter to nearest. Now we can see each individual pixels like in Photoshop. If we go back to the material, we will see that it has not changed. For some reason, you have to re-enter the tiling value for this to work and hit save in your material instance. And now we have pretty good results. Our image made with only individual squares with red, green and blue colors. But it looks great only on a short distance from the screen. Let me show you what's the problem here. Because of the limitations and how pixels are made, when we look at the screen from an angle we can see this green tint. Also, when we move our camera away from the screen or sideways, you can see these noisy glitches happening all over the screen. This can be really distracting for your scene, so here is the smart solution to fix that. Most of the times there is no reason to display RGB pixels on such large distance. We won't see them anyway. As an example in my final material you can see that when we are far away from the screen we can see absolutely clear image with no glitches or tints. As we get closer we begin to see some horizontal lines, which create subtle pixelated screen effect. When we are close enough we can see the pixels themselves. And finally, when we look at the screen from an angle we can see the pixels as well as the clear image. And we don't have any unusual tints or glitches. I'll show you exactly how to implement these techniques to this material. Let's start with an angle control. I'll need the same image texture but with the maximum quality to display on the screen. So I'll duplicate the pixelated texture and rename it to original. Open the texture settings and reset it to default resolution of 2K and also reset the filtering settings to default. Back to the master material, let's disconnect our nodes with emissive color for now. I'll bring my original texture from the content browser. Convert it to parameter, name it screen texture underscore original, also with the comments. The easiest way to control the viewing angle is to use Fresnel node. I'll use this node as an alpha to determine the blend between two versions, pixelated image and the clear one. I'll set the base reflect fraction in value to zero. I can right click and start previewing this node to see how it will work. When we look perpendicular, we will see the RGB pixels in the black area. And if we look at this angle, we will see the clear image in this white area. I'll stop previewing node. Also, let's add one scalar parameter and name it Fresnel Falloff to control the appearance of the blend between textures. I'll set the default value here to 5 and connect it with the first input. Let's add another LURP node and connect the Fresnel with the alpha. Then connect the original texture with the B input. I'll select these nodes and move them here. Let me zoom in. Let's connect this add node with the A input. Also, let's double click on this connection, add another reroute and position it here. Let me select these nodes and add another comment, view angle control. I'll connect it with emissive color. Let's see how it works. So we can see the pixels and when we look at the screen this way, we no longer have green tint, instead we have clear image. It also works sideways. Let's now create distance controls. The first will be these lines. To create these lines, I just created this simple texture with a white rectangle with a small resolution of 128 pixels. I'll add this texture to the material editor. Also convert it to a parameter and name it pixel mask underscore line. Connect the UV controls as well. And also add a comment. 
Do you see I like comments in my note graph? Then add linear interpolate nodes and connect our new texture with the alpha. Move this node here and connect my original texture with the B input. Also add another point to reroute the connection. I'll change the resolution to 1024 pixels for demonstration. If I now start previewing node, you can see that we've created this image with the lines, which will create this subtle pixelated line effect. I'll stop previewing node. In order to control the distance between the camera and the screen, we can use pixel depth node. This is a really big number, so we need to add a subtract node and also multiply node. To make sure this value is a number from 0 to 1, I'll add a clump node. Basically, the subtract node will control the distance, and the multiply node will control how fast the blending between textures will be. I'm gonna add scalar parameter and name it distance underscore lines. I'll set this value to 250 and connect it with the B input. I'm gonna set the multiply value to 0.01. So we've created this interactive mask and here is how it works. When we are this far distance, we will see only the original image. When we get closer, we will see the texture with these lines. It will be different for your screen, so you have to play with these values to get the result you need. And you have to do it using material instance in your viewport, because the previous node in the material editor will not display the distance correctly. Let's use another lerp node. Connect it with the alpha. Then connect the image with the lines with the A input. And finally connect the original image with the B input. I'll add another point to the connection curve, as well as the comment. I'll name it first distance control underscore lines. Let's see how it looks in the viewports. I have my 2K texture, and as we get closer to the screen, we can see the texture with these tiny lines. And now we need to bring back our RGB pixels with the second distance control. Let's go back to the material editor. I've moved my nodes a little bit. We can just duplicate these nodes and move them here. I'm gonna rename this scalar parameter to distance underscore pixels and set this value to 100. I'm also gonna change the multiply value to 0.03. Now let's connect our RGB pixels with the A input and our pixel lines with the B input. I also select these nodes and add another frame, second distance control underscore pixels. To control the brightness of the screen, let's add multiply node and a scalar parameter. I'm gonna name it emissive intensity and set it to something like 0.7. Connect it with the multiply. Add another common frame and connect these nodes with emissive color. Also, let's add another scalar parameter for the roughness. I'll leave it with a value of 0. Now I can hit save to compile the material. As you can see, it looks perfect. No distortions when moving the camera, tiny pixel lines, and also, at a short distance, we can see the RGB pixels. And of course, we created flexible material with a few parameters. For instance, we can use any pixel shape. Let's click this checkbox. I'm gonna choose different pixel texture, similar to what we saw in Battlefield 2042. You can also play around with the Fresnel falloff to make the better transition. I'll set it to 3. Now it looks a little bit smoother. We can also use different textures on this screen. We just need two versions of them. The original and the pixelated one. For instance, we can use this one. Or maybe this one. If I now zoom to the screen, we can see that we got RGB pixels from our texture automatically. Another cool thing about this material is the texture optimization. As you remember, at this distance we are using 2K texture. I can go to the view mode, optimization view modes and select required texture resolution. I can select my screen and choose here on the top my original texture. As you can see it's green, which means we are using good quality texture for that distance. If I zoom closer we start getting grey, then orange and red colors, which means we don't have enough texture resolution. And that's how you can determine when to use the blending between the original texture and the pixelated one. If I now select the texture with the pixels, you can see that it's in bright green color. And that's how you can use pretty small textures for the large screens like this one. If we just use 2K texture, we would have blurry image. But now we have absolutely cool looking pixels instead. As always, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you will find it helpful for your project. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In case if you have any ideas for new videos, please leave the comment below. See you in the next video.